Hey guys, it's Joe. And Courtney. From, from Hey, hey That's, That's Pretty cool. cool. We just got back from Cherry Capital Comic Con. Had a great time. Got a lot of cool stuff. Saw a lot of cool cosplays. Looked through tons of boxes of comics. Looked through all the booths, at all the action figures and collectibles and all that. Uh, they had a lot of other cool events going on for the Comic Con as well. 501st Legion. Great Lakes Garrison was there, raising money for the Daisy Foundation. That was pretty cool. Uh, in the gamer room, they were playing a lot of different board games and video games. One of the board games was Dungeons & Dragons, obviously. They're trying to bring back the popularity of that game. And uh, they were gaming for a cure against cancer, the fight against cancer. That was pretty cool. That was very important to me. My father passed away due to cancer, so... And the 501st was... The, and the Daisy Foundation yeah, was doing it for Fragile X Syndrome and Autism, which is also important to us because our son is autistic or on the autistic spectrum. But enough about the charities that were going on. Um, let's talk about some of the things we've seen. Huge sculpture of the Hulkbuster, like functional with lights in the chest and the hands. <laughs> it was so cool. Uh, there's a van called the iron van had iron man all over it different versions of iron man had even had a little deadpool on there hiding um it, said, it smells like old lady pants, pants in here, here. <laughs> old lady pants in here smells um like old lady pants. the two celebrities at cherry capital <laughs> comic con were cooper andrews and peyton witch and we'll talk more about them later, but let's take a look at the things we picked up. You want to go first? Mm, sure. She got some pretty so, good stuff. this is the first thing. It's a DC superhero Harley Quinn coin bank. Superhero girls. Oh, yeah, superhero girls. Sorry. So that's one. And then I got the new Batman Adventures Harley Quinn action collection. With the two pet eyes. This came out in 1998. Yes. Still in the box. She's got cloth. Yeah, her suit's cloth. <coughs> and don't pay attention to this one. Oh, this Nobody is likes this character but my wife. <laughs> I swear. So I'm a huge Jar Jar Binks fan. God. May the force have mercy on you, is what I can say about that. <laughs> so I had to have the 12-inch Jar Jar Binks. Anyone else Jar Jar Binks fans, please comment and let me know. I don't even think... There needs to be more Jar Jar Binks fans in the world. <laughs> I don't even think there's any other Gungans in any of the Star Wars movies. At all. Here's the program. Got a little grew down there. Holding the picture of, of the resort. Grand Travers Resort. Very nice resort. L a little pricey, but very nice. These are our passes up here. We, we actually have day. them. We still have them. If you want to see the hard copy, but kids also had their own pass with Pikachu and Lego Batman on them. And these were the guests and celebrities guests. and all that. Steve Geiger, which right my husband did get a Ninja Turtles hat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, story. So I was cosplaying as Jason the Red Ranger, walking around the booths, and I just happened to pass Cooper Andrews. I wasn't even trying to meet him or talk to him, and he's like, "Yo, Red Ranger, come here. Can I, can I look at your gun? I had my Legacy Blade Blaster." And the Legacy Red Ranger helmet. And the 25th anniversary, or 20th anniversary costume on. And it was kind of funny. I come up, and we start talking, and he's like, can I look at it? And I, I, I handed it to him, he's like, oh man, this is legit. This is cool as shit. Pardon my language. And that's what he said. And he was playing with it, he's like, Austin St. John, man, original Jason <laughs> Red Ranger, my favorite Ranger. I love the costume, man, love it. We, we didn't even talk about The Walking Dead. 
We talked about Power Rangers. He's a Power Ranger fan. <laughs> and a Ninja Turtle fan. So we went back later, after all that, and I wanted his autograph because I enjoyed talking to him. I've never watched The Walking Dead in my life. I've read, like, maybe two or three of The Walking Dead comics. I'm not a huge zombie horror fan, so not into that stuff. But he was such a cool guy that I went back and asked for my auto asked for his autograph on my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle hat. Right there. Look at that. <laughs> Cooper T. Andrews plays the character Jerry in Season 7 of The Walking Dead. And I was like, I know you're a Ranger fan. Are you a Turtle fan too? And he's like, yes. Actually, I am. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is what got him into and kept him into martial arts. I thought that was very, very awesome. And we share the same Ninja Turtle. And his... Yeah, favorite his, Ninja his favorite Mikey. turtle's Michelangelo. <laughs> He's like, three, two, one, what's your favorite turtle? And I was like, oh, man, that's a tough one. He's like, come on, dude. I was like, Raphael? He's like, okay. And then I was like, or Slash? And he's like, Slash. And I was like, the evil turtle from Dimension X, at least in the original version of Slash's storyline. Obviously, he's Raphael's pet turtle that got mutated in the newer versions. But enough about Ninja Turtles. Enough about Cooper Andrews. Oh, I also met Peyton Witch from Stranger Things. These were all the people there. So, I'm probably the only person in the world with a Ninja Turtle hat signed by a Walking Dead cast member. That's awesome. Those are the last it, The con went on for three days. We did cut out early today. Because <coughs> we were just... These are some of the Michigan... Yeah, these are Michigan exclusive... <laughs> Superhero and Star Wars based t-shirts that you could get made and Pokemon obviously It's very awesome. I I Definitely like the Captain America and <laughs> Superman ones. Those are awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm holding uh, Something from what I got Here's the, Here's the floor plan the layout There's a lot of comic book artists, independent, uh, guys who worked for the big two, Marvel and DC, uh, some image comic artists there, local guys from the Michigan area that are comic book artists, that was very awesome, and speaking of comic books, let me show you what I dug into and got, for 50 cents each, Superman, Last Stand of, on Krypton. I've never read this, but the cover is what got me. Because I saw Jor-El right here. With the sun on his chest and all that. And then, here's Kal-El. Clark Kent, Superman, whatever you want to call him. In the book, he's called Kal-El. And in this story, it's about how Kryptonian technology saved the human race. My wife's going to show you a few panels on the inside. Beautiful artwork. I know, it's pretty. I'm not that big of a Superman <laughs> fan, but all comic book nerds, all superhero fans know that you gotta bend your knee at the last son of Krypton. Big battle scene. <laughs> My favorite superhero, at least from DC, is the Green Lantern. And I dug into some boxes and pulled out almost the full run of the Green Lantern Corps' Blackest Night storyline. This has got the pink going on, like Star Sapphire. Green Lantern Corps Prelude to Blackest Night, number 34. Let's see if we can get a better picture. 
there we go. 35 with Sinestro and the yellow lanterns on the front. This is number 37 of the prelude to Blackest Night with the Red Lantern logo of, well, the logo is written in red, like the Red Lantern Corps. This is the beginning of Blackest Night. Everyone that's not familiar with the Blackest Night storyline, the Black Lantern and his power ring is the power of death, and he can resurrect people and turn them into zombies. So I guess I do like some things with zombies in it. Here we go. This is Blackest Night, number 41, Children of the Core. Like Children of the Corn. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of a creepy cover. Mm-hmm. Here we have another one. With the green lanterns fighting. Yes, there are multiple lanterns. Whether if you're not a fan, you wouldn't know that, but here's Blackest Night Green Lantern Corps number 43 with Guy Gardner turning into the Red Lantern. He put on the Red Ring of Rage. And then we got number Blackest Night number 44, Green Lantern Corps, where Guy Gardner is burning Kyle Rainier, his friend, the other Green Lantern, with his powers. And then we got Green Lantern Corps, Blackest Night number 45. You got a, a war of just different colored lanterns oh, fighting. Really cool. And then I got Blackest Night Green Lantern Corps number 46, Black Ice, with Guy Gardner on there again as the Green Lantern again, but he's being frozen by a Black Lantern. I'm assuming that might be, I'm actually not sure who that character is. I would have to dig in and read it. Maybe I will. I also got, this goes hand in hand with a figure I got. Viz Manga Heroes, Ultraman Classic, Battle of the Ultra Brothers. If you don't know who Ultraman is, he is kind of like what started it all as far as... Technically, this is Superhuman Samurai in America, but he's an Ultraman. He's one of the Ultramen. <laughs> Ultraman is sort of like the great-granddaddy of Power Rangers. And this goes with that, right? Mm-hmm. And I did get a couple vintage turtle figures that I needed for my collection that I've been waiting for, looking for, for a very long time. I had these as a little boy, and I will go more in depth when I start doing my turtle figure reviews. I got General Trag, Rock Soldier, Commander of the Rock Army from Dimension X. He's got his rifle. He's got his blaster. <clears throat> He's got a turtle shell helmet. Turtle on the bottom of his foot. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. And like I said, I'll go more in depth. And for the hero side, I got one of my favorite figures. Like I know I had to talk to him to get him. <laughs> I loved this thing as a kid. I played with this thing till he broke. Ace Duck. He's not Almost fully complete. complete. He's missing two egg bombs. But other than that, he's near mint when it comes to having all of his accessories. He's got his gun, he's got his hat, he's got his wings, he's got his belt, he's got his little egg grenades. Except for two. Except for two. It, all this is removable. The wings come off, the hat comes off. I, I think his face looks a little better without the hat. He kind of has that Howard the Duck look to me. But 
His name is Ace Duck. And if I remember correctly, he's a mutated fighter pilot. <laughs> like an Air Force fighter pilot. Back on to this guy. So in the 90s, around the time that Power Rangers was getting big, they were trying to adapt other Japanese TV series, such as <laughs> Kamen Rider into Masked Rider, uh, Metal Heroes into Big Bad Beetleborgs. Mm 